right, welcome back to the Daisy Hanger. This is actually the first maintenance video of 2020. Wow, crazy. It's just with so much going on, all the quarantines and not being able to fly, and then when you can fly, you want to fly, and so then turning the wrench kind of comes second, which is just kind of the nature of the beast around here because when it's beautiful in the Northwest, the last thing you want to be doing is stuck in a hangar, wrenching on an airplane. But today, we've had issues with Daisy and her flaps. Now, before the last annual, uh, we noticed that uh, I was having some uh, wag out of the flaps. And what we mean by wag is they kind of hunt and search up and down uh, when it was selected for takeoffs. So, come to find out, the switches were bad. It actually cracked in half. Got, I'll find pictures of them somewhere. So I got the switches replaced and had a hell of a time trying to get them adjusted correctly. Not only to follow the full range of motion from zero all the way down to flaps 40 like this airplane has, but also to make sure that when it actually did retract and come back, it would go back to zero. And I got it to the point where it would actually select all of the pre all of the selected flap settings but then i'd still have like two more degrees and it wouldn't be in the full up position which for this airplane isn't a big deal because you some you can select 10 degrees of flaps at pretty much any airspeed because the first 10 degrees uh, are only limited to 160 miles an hour now this airplane normally cruises at about 135, so unless you're in a dive, you don't have to worry about your flaps. So that little two degrees was not a big deal. It just was an efficiency thing. So I tried to find, um, and nothing was really mentioned in the maintenance manuals, I, I tried to find videos on how to adjust these things and what to look for. And you know, So guess what? This will be the first video on what to look for in your Cessna when you have a follow-up cable system um, and we'll we'll break this down and, and show you how this all works so with that let's get going so as most people are aware airplanes have flaps and on the Cessna this lever right here controls the flaps. And this is full up, that's full down. We have a 10 degree unit, or a 10 degree mark, a 15, 20, and then full is actually 40. But you can actually select this in any position. There are detents, so that's the 20 detent. There's the, yeah, detent for 20. And I think that's 15 in there somewhere but there's the 10 mark so as you can see on the placard 10 you can throw all your flat all the you can throw 10 degrees of flaps out at pretty much any airspeed for this airplane because uh, 160 is the speed limit so but how this works is this lever arm for the flaps which there's actually a reason why the shape of the handle is because it's the shape of the flap and landing gear have a little wheel on them so that's kind of a standardization that they do for now certified aircraft the control that you're actually working will actually simulate or resemble that control surface so that's the reason for this little wedge shape anyway I digress inside this underneath the panel this lever arm is connected to a little plastic cam which looks like kind of like a big wide I don't know it looks like a big I don't want to say mushroom because it doesn't look like a, I guess it could look like a mushroom but anyway it has lobes on it and it's rounded on the bottom and on the inside of that so that cam moves up and down and then on the other side, there's a plate that has the two switches. So in here, you can see, as I move the flap handle up and down, that little cam is 
moving with the flat handle. And when it comes in contact with either one of the switches on either side, it will, once the system's energized, those switches, depending on if it's this one or that one, it depends on which one gets activated, and that will energize the motor, which is out here on the wing. Actuator, back over here, this bell crank, and then up here with this lever arm, you see this clevis, and that clevis is hooked to a cable. And the cable runs all the way back through the wing and back underneath the panel. And the very end is connected right here. So this is directly mechanically linked to the flaps and gives a feedback on their position. So the way this works is the feedback cable is connected to these switches. So when the flap handle is moved to energize either one of these switches, it puts them out of sequence with the handle. So therefore, when this switch has now just been activated, it's gonna energize and cause the flaps to go down. When the flaps go down, this rod will move in that direction and then center up these switches back onto that cam. So it's what we call a follow-up system. When I originally replaced the switches, I just assumed that the cable was properly rigged. And so that's what was causing the inability of the flaps to go to their full retract position, even though they were selecting in all the right positions. And made sure that 10 degrees was actually showing 10 degrees. I put a protractor on the on the flap just like you would just like you would like the manual says. So if you're making these adjustments and you can't get the right dimension on the cable underneath the panel, pay close attention out on the wing to make sure that there's enough adjustment in the inside of the wing to allow you to make the adjustments out here under the panel. <laughs> I think I said that right. So I originally replaced those switches and assumed that the cable was rigged properly. However, that was not the case. So what I initially did was replace the switches and adjust them. I made sure that all the settings, when 10 was selected, that the flaps actually showed their, their correct deflection based upon a protractor that you put on the back of the flap and make sure that the 10 degrees is the proper angle and so forth and so on. So I was getting the proper 10, 15, 20, and 40. However, when it would roll all the way back up, there'd be that little bit where the flaps didn't agree. So I started looking into it. I could push on that rod end a little bit and get the, the flaps to get their last little bit and then they would fare properly on the trailing edge. Ah, so there's something wrong with the cable. So I opened up this panel and I looked inside because I couldn't get the rod end to make any more adjustments down here underneath the panel. When I opened up that panel and took a really close look at the cable, I realized that there was way too much thread sticking out of that clevis. So disassembled the clevis, rolled in some adjustment and made sure that the threads were showing through the little witness hole on the clevis, reassembled everything and then now I'm in the process of re-rigging the flaps and we'll show you what that looks like. All right, so here are some uh, diagrams right out of the maintenance manual for the flap system. So initially when you're working on flaps, if, if you're doing like a new install or, a, or a from zero rig, you're always working from the right flap because this is where all the control mechanism is based off of from the handle to that flap. So the rig is done initially from the handle or the lever to the right flap. And then once all these adjustments are all done, then you sync up the two flaps together. But the controls are all based off of the right hand flap. And inside here 
here's where the motor and the transmission into the drive and it pulls this crank around which is connected to this rod so when you're doing your pre-flights that's the rod you're going to see coming out of the flap the follow-up cable is actually in just behind this here and that follow-up cable if you note goes through the wing into the center of the cabin back and around and then comes underneath the panel and is connected to the switch pack and this is the exploded view of the lever with the cam the switches and the cable two cams or flap tracks this is the outboard and this is the inboard these are just cam followers so they just control where the flaps go in relation because these are Fowler flaps and Fowler flaps initially start back and then as they increase in angle they start to drop so we'll see that in the uh, the final install the, the, the final operation so this rod is what controls the position of the flap and that is directly connected to that mechanism in there so as the drive motor turns that pulley it pulls on and pushes on that rod so the first thing you want to do is raise the flaps all the way up and make sure that you're actually in the full up position and you'll know that because this should be matched up and got a little bit of play here but I don't think uh, the overrun um, allows the flap to go in that full up position step one is to check your overrun and the overrun is controlled by these switches in here so these switches are the absolute up and down position of the flap this will kill the power to the motor to make sure that the flaps when they go to their full up position don't continue to try and go up or down continue to keep going down the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check the switch for the up position one thing to note also make sure that you're checking your effectivities they're broken down by serial numbers and some airplanes have a different configuration so this is my airplane with this configuration but on the next page this is a completely different setup as far as the way the position of the cable comes in and where it gets routed so uh, be mindful of your serial numbers and your effectivities so what I've done to attach my inclimator to the um, flap is I have just taken a six inch scale and this thing's magnetic Ta -da! and now I can sit here and just watch where my flaps are sitting so the reference is set off of a zero when the flaps are up So this is the problem I'm getting with adjusting this just the way the book says. You put the flap lever in the full up position, center the cam with the switches in the middle of it, and adjust the feedback cable to that position. Then you have the down switch, which is the one in the front, or forward, till it's just clear of the cam then you adjust the other one with a 62 63 thousandths gap and this is what I end up getting so it's not the actual gap between the cam apparently and the switch roller but the actual I believe it's the actuation of the switch because this is what I'm getting when it flaps up this isn't as, as bad as it was before um, 
before the flaps were ending up just below the trailing edge here. So this is a little extreme. So we're going to make another adjustment and make sure we get the flaps all the way up. Where that should be sitting right yeah and we should be somewhere around 20 degrees and that puts us within our margin of four degrees between the handle and out here so uh, that's full up the other one was full down and then we can select everything in between okay, this is what I'm talking about So, landing light was on. So this is what happened when I've got the switches. <laughs> so annoying. This is rigged, just as the book tells you to do so. However, there's little tiny adjustments in that switch when the switch touches the cam, and when it actually activates the switch, and. I think I need to base my dimensions not on the actual switch roller itself, but the actual clicking of the switch when it activates. So we'll, we'll try that because this is. I wouldn't want to land with this thing going on like that. <laughs> I'd be, I'd be landing with flaps up because they're not moving with flaps up. So when I shut off the master switch, when it was in the bottom part of the cycle, I turned off the switch and then I heard the actual micro switch click just at the very end, meaning it was trying to signal the flaps to go back up. So we'll make that little micro adjustment. Get it? Micro switch. Hey, resistance is futile. So I'm gonna pull a Mike Patey here right now. Yes, got it done. So it ended up being the Teleflex cable was completely out of whack. So once you get the switches the way they're supposed to be in the maintenance manual, you should have something like this. back up to so the starting angle is 20 degrees and then so that essentially you just subtract 20 from all of that and that's what you should be having for all your position so with that said if you're having problems with getting your switches adjusted make sure to go back and look at that follow-up cable and make sure that it's adjusted properly so with that we can sign everything off and let's go flying So in conclusion, if you're having trouble rigging your flaps, and you should obviously be working from the maintenance manual, um, but with respects to the switches, all systems are a little bit different. Older switches are going to have a little more adjustment. You might have to tweak a little bit here and there as far as uh, um, when the up and down switches are actuating. Um, you definitely want to check your overrun to make sure the flaps aren't trying to uh, continue to run in the full up or the full down position. Uh, check your uh, feedback cable. Mine was adjusted way too long and so what that was doing was it was overrunning the actual position switches underneath the instrument panel. So um, going back into that uh, uh, rod end um, and having to pull out some of those threads almost Pretty much, I think I'm pretty close to bottoming out both clevises, and um, it it works really fine. So um, that's one thing to look at. 
Also too, make sure your cable tensions are set properly. And that's done by unzipping that, that headliner and your aileron are in the full back, I believe, and then the next two forward are, are, will be your flap cables. Make sure those are set to the proper tensions. And that tension's gonna change as the flaps go up and down a little bit. So it's even mentioned in the manual. So a uh, couple things on the adjustment for the switches. Don't over tighten those um, screws holding the switches. They are plastic. And it helps too if you're trying to get the right, just the just the the, the right exact position. Make sure you have the pivot point of that screw of that switch a little tightened. And when you go and do your final final tighten, start at the pivot first because as you tighten up the the one that's slotted, that torque will actually start to move the switch. So. Um, do very gentle, small adjustments and uh, take your time with it. Um, so um, I think that's it for all the tips and try to think. was there anything else? So with that, that's just a little rundown, uh, general description and operation of the flap system and how it gets adjusted. So I hope this is helpful for somebody who's having trouble with their flaps. And if you had that little wig wag like I did, Go back and make sure that uh, your feedback cable is adjusted properly so all right with that thanks for watching guys remember like subscribe and may all your flying be good flying i think this is the first maintenance maintenance this is actually the first maintenance visit ah. dang 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 okay you know i could be done with this thing by now but i'm sitting here filming it trying to make a video Incliminer. Incl Incliminer. <laughs> Incliminer.